All right, and some of you are asleep, I see. Uh, you are not responding to the poll, and probably it's full screen that you're not. And uh, I opened uh, a ticket to fix the um, uh, problem that they said. Uh, students say when they go on full screen, they don't see the polls. So we'll see what happens with that. So, uh, uh, Kavita Ben, uh, you had a question. No, no questions, sir. Okay, that's yeah, okay. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was the wrong poll. Sorry, <laughs> I pushed the poll by mistake. So that this the other poll that you saw that was wrong. All right. So, uh, so we are going to talk about. Let me just uh, go through what we have done last time to see if there is any questions about that. So, uh, uh, let's see what did we have last time. Um, OP244, B, and let's go over here. Let's see, these are the stuff we talked about. I'm just gonna take, break them all over here. We talk about it quickly and then we're gonna, there we go. So we'll start with, uh, um, uh, what is this? Oh, we talked about C-type uh, programming and we create a structure uh, and we saw how we pass the structures to, to an object, in, uh, in, to, a, to an action, instead of an action actually being inside uh, a structure. And uh, then uh, we put the uh, functions inside uh, a person uh, and we said each person should be able to do its own stuff and therefore the person owns the prop, the the uh, methods that it has and therefore all the variables inside the person which we call member variables or attributes now become global to all the methods of the person then after that uh, what we did we actually made uh, those variables member variables private so they are not accessible by by any other code outside of the person and we um, the only uh, pro actions who have uh, who had access to the person to the private values were actually the member functions and uh, where is D hmm I didn't have D just step to E that's okay hmm. I don't see it anyways anyways we use the when uh, uh, we uh, uh, implemented uh, our member functions that we call methods or uh, or uh, uh, query or uh, uh, modifiers in this case displays a query at any time we have a query that is not supposed to change the contents of the object we made sure that our queries are constant and our modifiers are not and that's uh, helping ourselves not to shoot ourselves in the foot and uh, we explained what happens if if it's not constant we can actually change stuff in the function whose logic is not supposed to change the object and therefore uh, we fix the problems like uh, we fix the logical problems by adding constant over there to make sure everything's good uh, we showed that constant functions are revocable when you are passing the objects as constant but non-constant variable uh, non-constant uh, functions are not so in a function that a reference a constant reference of a person is passed we can call display and nothing else if we call anything else it is not going to allow us and also a constant functions are callable from constant functions and not other ones we learned what safe empty state is it's a recognizable invalid empty state that you set in a class so you can actually identify if the class is usable or not usually we you can either create flags to keep track of those uh, uh, of that or what you can do is uh, um, you can either um, use flags or what you can do is simply uh, see what parts and attributes of the class are not um, 
uh, uh, what are special values that you can put in attributes of the class so you can recognize that is it's valid like making the age valid and empty uh, uh, name being empty are we okay down to this point all right So now that we are okay down to this point, I forgot to actually activate my webcam. Why is it blurry? Come on. Yep, there we go. That's better. Okay. Um, next thing we need to talk about is understanding how we actually can take the uh, take the uh, uh, methods of a class and put it outside of the class we, we are implementing so we can have the header file and cpp file situation in this in in here and that was uh, when we actually saw that the uh, the member prototypes stay inside the class private or public and what we have outside like we use for the namespaces we can actually specify if uh, a function is a member of a class and implemented therefore in a CPP file and then uh, using uh, a mark example I actually built uh, a module with a class for a mark uh, with that's utils that's not mark let's put the mark over here there you go and uh, we created a few things for the mark and we went through it the implementation was not complete we're gonna go through it as we're gonna continue our discussions about the uh about the um uh constructors destructors and um, member functions and privacy uh, and we had the header file and the CPP file for the mark created and um, uh, we went down to this point whatever it is we're gonna uh, review it go through it so we said that we have a mark mark has a character a pointer title that is dynamic then we have to save uh, exactly the amount of memory that we want for the title for the mark because we don't know what is the size we decided the mark has a value and a maximum value uh, that can grow up to that point and we created uh, uh, a function to initialize the value for m title because it's dynamic we have to make sure it's either null when it's not there or uh, if there is nothing in there or it it actually has the allocated memory for it initialization runs once at the beginning only once at the beginning only and that's the function we created for it um, we had clear at the end so that is going to run once at the end once when uh, uh, um, once at the end before the uh, mark is going to go out of scope so we're going to clean everything up with initialization we set more at uh, m title to to null m value to an m to an impossible value that is minus one and maximum value to a zero and the safe empty state down to this point we said is enough if we check to see if title is null if title is null we don't have a mark a mark without a title doesn't make sense so down to this point we're gonna uh set that one to be the flag for our empty state and we always said all the stuff that we are doing is and will change as we are going through our implementations uh, to clear at the end we have to delete whatever we have in the title and then we set it back to null to make sure if we are reusing it is uh, it is set to null but of course this is nonsense in here at the moment because we are saying it runs one once at the end and when it's at the end who cares if it's null or not but we're putting it over here anyway because we are rookies we had a set function created and the set function for us actually um, uh, sets the uh, the value intelligently which is essentially make sure that the value that we are doing is between zero and max and if it's not it sets the object to an empty states state and uh, setting an object in into an empty state is kind of um, iffy thing and you got to be extremely careful about it because when you are setting to an empty state you have to make sure where is our set empty state that the object is deleted the, the the title is deleted and then set back to null we have to make sure we do that because title may point to something 
that uh, we need to remove it. Uh, we don't need to worry about making sure uh, we don't worry about title being pointing to a garbage value because our initialization will set it to null pointer when we start. So, and set max is the same thing. We are saying we're setting the maximum of the, the, the mark we're going to get. It has to be greater than one and less than we came up with something like a thousand. I don't know who mentioned that, but it says we may have thousand marks being able to be received in a, in, uh, a mark. So that's going to be the maximum thing. And if it is not, obviously, we're going to set it to an empty state. Then we went through display and we're going to set, set, we check to see if the object is an empty state. We're going to say this is a bad mark or invalid mark. Otherwise, uh, we simply get the value, whatever it is, and we put out of max and we're going to show it that way. So it, it gets the value. And uh, when you look at it, display is written before get. So I do not care how get is going to be implemented. I will reuse my code as I'm designing the code. And may I ask a question? I actually posted something and I, and I told you I did not implement the mark the way I was supposed to. I did it better in section a and i posted a video how many people actually looked at those video uh, of that video that i posted many of you didn't you are very very bad people you have to do you have to go back and do it it is in the announcements and i'm going to copy that announcements and i don't know if i actually posted it in the in the teams or not let me see if i posted it or not uh let me check op244 naambb No, I did not. So I'm just going to not to forget. I'm just going to put it right now for everybody to see, even those who are guests and are in our class. So um, let me go to the announcements. Um, so this is the 244 announcements that we have, and this is what I posted. So let me edit and copy it right in here. Okay. Um, copy all right make sure you actually watch that video because that's a very good uh, hint and, ex and experience for you to actually do the uh, so I'm going to say how to program how to actually start programming how to Okay, it didn't paste the, the YouTube video. I'll add that one later on. I post it to the office. It's just good. To, it's there. I know that I have to do it later. Anyways, so now you watch that one later to see exactly how you have to start doing programming. And, I, and the fact that uh, only 60%, 40% uh, of you watched it, that's very bad news. Very, very bad news. Anyway. Uh, sir. Can I ask about the uh, initialization function? Yes, of course you can. In in the notes, um, with, when they use the student example, they said that you can just use student and then brackets and close that. Is it better to, to create a void in it, or is it better to just maybe do mark mark? Uh, can you give me a can you give me a, a line number here that I can apply what you just said? Uh, yeah, so so instead of doing on in the header file, instead of at line 10 doing void init, uh -huh. in the notes it says that you could just do mark, bracket, bracket, semicolon, and then you would just define mark, colon, colon, mark as the initialization. I'm just curious if it matters at all or... No, that, that, that cannot be done. Can you type that in a, ch in a chat so I can see what... Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll copy and paste the... Copy, uh... copy and paste it over there. I'll take a look at it. Um, uh, probably when we talked about talk about construction and destruction, it's going to be better to explain. 
Um, yeah, this this is under the uh, the constructor notes in the. Um, yeah, so IPD. wait, let me get to the constructors when we get to it. <laughs> oh, okay, we sorry. Got constructors yet? Okay, but it's it, the init is doing essentially the same thing, you know. Uh, when we get to it, I'll explain. Okay, okay. I have to first explain what construction and destruction is, then we can actually understand what is initialization. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So essentially, this function is completely removed. We don't need it. It's got to be automated. And the automation can be done in five different ways. And each one has its own benefic benefits. So we'll, when we get to it, we'll see it. Thanks for the question. Okay, so yeah, so get and uh, max, we have done it. And that was our mark. So I'm going to actually save this thing under the today's lecture. So we can get back to it. So that's mark.h and mark.cpp2. I'm going to put it in today's lecture again there you go save mark.cpp so these were the marks any questions about mark before we continue okay now so that the mark is done we created a utility thing and we copied all the stuff that we had in sdr tools and put it in a utility over here to use it for different things not to have that uh thing uh, added at the top crt secure schmiggly dingy that we had so we, we removed that one and we are using utils so i'm ac actually going to bring my utils uh into today's lecture too okay so that's utils gonna go over there and utils.cpp the same thing um, in case I want to use it so that's utils and uh, transcript is something that we're going to add later on to mark but we haven't done it so oh I should have saved it I will so um, let me actually copy this trans I'm going to put all files over here and do this uh, Copy. Paste that transcript back. That's transcript.cpp, and I'm going to copy transcript.h so we can continue working on it. Copy and paste. okay so that's that let's remove that one uh, this was the main for the mark that we were dealing with it so um, I'm just gonna copy it over here and use it over here make sure that it runs before I continue with the rest of the stuff so let me just add to uh, existing items that are why is it going like this details I hate that icon thingy details there you go so we need uh, utils that one and this mm this one and this one add all that and compile and run just make sure we are okay with everything in here okay it's it's working and we did embedded mark and we just stopped over there so so that was the mark thingy any questions before we continue all right so where is this? Here it is. Bring it up. Yeah. Sorry, let me put it over there. And I posted that in the in the teams. Uh, for uh, the office um, that thing that I mentioned over there so please watch this video it is important how to actually start programming uh, this is something that you need to uh, need to know if you want to be able to be quick in your programming okay so keep that in mind uh, and now let's talk about uh, 
let's talk about uh, uh, C in and C out. Okay, so first of all, uh, C in and C out are simply um, um, objects. Um, C in and C out are simply objects that uh, uh, are instantiated out of the uh, the input and output uh, um, classes that we have I stream and O stream and they are global objects so as we created mark over here M if I instantiate this thing globally and put it out there and extern it so other places can can see it that M becomes available mark becomes available any place we include mark.h so what I'm saying is that if I have for example if I do something like this in here if I say over here mark and I call it for any reason if I call it say global mark okay and I do something like this create an instance of mark over here and make it a um, an extern now I can actually have this thing instantiated globally in mark and if I actually do that this global mark of mine will be available any place that I want to actually use the mark so so it becomes a global variable for every uh, global object every place to be able to use so in here just imagine instead of uh, I'll remove that one and I can simply do something like uh, uh, global mark here I can say global mark in it global mark display and global mark uh, clear at the end and it works perfectly because uh, it's literally accesses the global variable I created the, in here in the SDDS they did the exact same thing in IO stream header file and they created two objects so essentially in IO stream header file we have something like O stream C out and we have O stream C out and we have an I stream C in something like this created and instantiated and then made globally available everywhere and that's why you can actually use C in and C out at any place you input an output okay so that's C in and C out in the flesh exactly what they are I'm going to remove that global thingy over here to undo and I'm going to give you a perfect example for it later on when we come to uh, when we come to uh, um, operator overloading but now I just want to talk about C in and C out and see how these objects work and how we can actually read and write with them are we okay down to this point now that we understand we have member functions and member functions of objects can be called we understand that C in ha is an object and it actually can be uh, it, it has functions that can be called with uh, for example uh, when you are actually reading a, 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 a value a string from a entry or a character or something you want to get uh, specific things when you write over here something like character ch okay we know that if we do c in ch it reads a character but there's actually a function inside c in that does the exact same thing so you can actually say ch is equal to c in dot get that get function reads one character from uh, console okay so now if I actually go C out over here, C out, uh, CH, you will see that that single variable will be uh, received for doing that. So if I actually run the program, I can actually do it like this. I can actually write over here A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And as soon as I hit enter, you'll say it's got to say C, H, A because it read one character over here and A was read over here. Uh, can anybody tell me where the rest of it is then? The buffer? The buffer. And that buffer, Isabella, is actually inside your keyboard so it's essentially your keyboard has a buffer over here that when you hit it first 
all the stuff from your keyboard goes into that buffer and then from there it's going into your program using C in. So if your C in reads character by character, things are kind of coming like that. So it is buffered. So if I do it again, let's say four times like that, if I actually run it like now, it's going to get four integers over four. Uh, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And if I hit enter, you see A, B, C, D is red and E, F, uh, G, E, F, G, H is remaining in the keyboard are we okay with this do we understand this and it is interesting for you to know that this get over here is actually overloaded in many different ways so not only you can read it like that you can actually read it like this ch so it actually you can actually pass the ch as uh uh, a reference of a character into get and it will exactly work the same way and if I run the program you'll see now the get is going to work in two different ways okay so now we have two different types of gets so uh, two different versions two different overloads of get um, and to be able to actually ignore whatever we have in this uh, in the buffer and get rid of it we actually have a function in cn so in cn you can say cn dot ignore now in here i can say up to say a thousand characters and stop at backslash n that means keep reading so this essentially is the like this is ex exactly as take a look it's as if i go uh do or I, I can actually do this um, I'm not gonna write the code I, I wanted to write the code for it but if I do it it's gonna be too complicated it's, anyways it's a loop essentially uh, I wanted to write the code but I, I don't want to uh, confuse the heck out of everyone so it keeps reading uh, and ignoring characters and stops up to at backslash n or the characters whichever whichever comes first so if i say over here ignore three now for example okay uh, let me just uh, uh, save this over here for saying uh zero one c in dot get dot cpp okay so that's c in dot get and uh, say I, I I I receive one integer over here like this, then I'm gonna go c in dot ignore three, and I'm gonna say backslash n. Okay, then I'm gonna say ch. Again, I'm gonna do it like this. Okay. So now I'm going to actually run the program and go step by step so you'll see what's going on. So I'm going to go at left over here and this one's going to be at right. Now take a look. Uh, actually, let's go step by step. So let's stop and go step by step. Okay, so so it's it gets uh, wants to get one character over here but i'm going to enter a b c d e f g h i j k and i hit enter so c h is picked up that is the first one over here is picked up by c in dot get then i'll come over here and i'm going to say ignore three characters or backslash in whichever comes first obviously what is in the buffer is now b c d e f g h i k so definitely it's going to reach the three characters first so it's going to ignore b c d and it's going to stop and therefore e f g h i j k will stay in the buffer and therefore the next get over here after that ignore will pick up e as you see as, as So, essentially, this will be the output of the program. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, whatever. As you see, A and E are picked up and B, C, D is ignored uh, because backslash N is not hit. Are we okay with this?
So essentially, a flush, a proper flushing keyword could be something like cin.ignore and put some ridiculous number in here, which means it's going to keep reading up to 10,000 characters and stop that stop backslash n. Therefore, now it is going to have a, a, a flush the keyboard. So now I'm going to uh, do a prompt so we can actually see what we are doing in here. I'm going to create a prompt so we can see the data entry. Uh oh. And now when we actually run this program, you will see that the first one is prompted over here. Okay, so I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and enter. And as soon as I enter, A is received, 3 is ignored, B, C, D, E, and then C, H, E is received. As you see, it skips the other one. And now because it ignores 10,000 characters in backslash N, it wipes everything up and waits for me to enter a new one and now I can actually enter a new one and I'll put over here X and as you see X comes out so this is literally to flush keyboard do we understand how to flush the keyboard now and you should always remember that there is always a backslash and is backslash and left in a keyboard and it's always safe to flush it which means so let me just put over here, save this, 0, 2, ignore.cpp. Okay, so that's the ignore. And you can always flush after uh, a key with um, certainty. There is no uh, problem with it. So I'm going to go in that utils of mine. Okay, in utils of mine, I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call that function... Um, int get int so I'm gonna create a function that receives an integer from uh, input and I'm gonna get that one copy and I'm gonna go to uh, utils.cpp and in utils.cpp I'm going to say get int and in that get int I'm gonna have int value and I'm gonna say c in uh, value C in C in value and now that I have done that I can actually flush the keyboard because I know if they actually enter an integer after that integer at least I have one new line sitting in a keyboard because if somebody wants to enter one two three they put one two three and hit enter so one two three will be read by c in and that single backslash n is there so i can actually say c in dot ignore a thousand characters and backslash n so that guarantees if they put garbage afterwards it actually will ignore everything afterwards so I'm gonna save that now if I come to this program over here and include my in, include the utils I can actually do something like this say uh, C out enter an int integer and then I'm gonna say uh, and I have int value I can say value is set to get int so it receives an integer and I can easily do it again and let me just go over here see out you entered value and I can easily do it again making sure that the second one will be successful no matter what so in here I can say enter another int now when I run the program I can get an integer and here I can say one two three and put any any garbage here knowing 
that it will flush. Okay, and as soon as I hit enter, it's going to say enter one, two, three. I should have gone to new line. Sorry, I forgot. Enter You entered one, two, three. And L. And L. Okay, let's run it again. All right, let's stop. Okay, we'll run it again. There we go. So one, two, three, and garbage. And I hit enter. It's going to receive the first one, flush the garbage, and return it. Now I'm going to go two, three, four, garbage. And it's going to receive two, three, four, and garbage goes to the garbage. So essentially, that's flushing. Are we okay with that? All right. So. Zero three simple get int. Obviously, if I want to write a get int program like that, that actually receives a get int, I'm gonna write, I'm not gonna write it like that. I'm gonna make sure that I have over here constant character pointer prompt so I can actually let the user enter the value for me. And I'm gonna leave it to be null PTR, which means they can ignore it if they want to. And then in here, I'm gonna have the constant character pointer and utils added in utils.cpp so in here I'm, go I'm gonna have constant character pointer prompt that's the prompt that they're gonna give me and in here I'm gonna say if prompt which means if if prompt is not null see out prompt stv so that saves some printout by the user, so actually, uh, I can I can right now uh, my program is backwards compatible, which means if I actually run the program like this, it will still work perfectly with absolutely no problem because that null thingy it, it will be passed and it's not going to show anything. Um, it's not going to show anything because the value that is passed is null. But in here, instead of having a C out, I can actually have my prompt in here and don't have it in C out and if I enter it now it works the exact same way I'll go one two three I hit enter you entered one two three and enter another end so now my get it is getting better do we understand what I did just now all right so essentially if we want to name it I use the safe empty state of a character string in here to identify if the character is not usable or not. That's literally what we did. We said over here, if prompt is not null, display it. As easy as that. And because the default value for the argument is null pointer, when they don't provide anything, I can detect over here that nothing is coming in, therefore don't show anything. Are we okay with that? All right, so now that we know that, let's go uh, do a little bit of a uh, little bit more of that uh, uh, CN thingy that we have done. Uh, so we talked about ignore. We know ignore, and ignore, by the way, has two different things. So uh, I can actually um, uh, let me just show you this. So this one is going to be uh, zero four dash uh, um, get int. A bit better but it's not still it's not still foolproof a bit better mm. okay all right so going back to what we have done here if I bring up my program uh, let me just uh, Let me look at that uh, thing that we have done, uh, see and ignore. So this ignore thing, yeah, I forgot to mention one thing over here that I want to do, is that ignore ha is an overloaded, uh, ignore is an overloaded uh, 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 value, uh, an overloaded uh, uh, function two which means 
let me actually do it like this I can actually do something like this cn dot ignore if if you just call one ignore it ignores only one character so now if I go value is set to get int and see out If I do that, so if I do something like this and I and I run the program, if I just, why am I getting an error? Uh, oh, a program still running over there. I have to stop that. All right. Now, if I run the program, you will see that if I enter two, three, four, five, hit enter. It's going to read 345 because 2 is ignored. Remember, ignore if you don't call it, it's only one character. One character to ignore. Uh, are we okay with that? Jason? Why not? Jason, you said you're not okay. Why not? Jason, are you with oh, me? Oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't unmute. Okay. Um, uh, if you don't put a number to to ignore, it's um, one. It's always one. But yes. you're saying this is overloaded because it's the same function without, like, isn't it's it the just same the same function? With, it, overloading essentially means uh, different functions, same name, different functions. Because they are both ignore, one with integer and a character, and the other one ignore. That's what it is. And by the way, okay. there is no. Uh, 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 are we clear on that, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and there is no such thing. Ignore. There is no such thing. We don't have such a thing. You cannot write this. We don't have a single argument ignore. Can anybody tell me what happens if I actually write something like this? Uh, it will go into int. Pardon me? It will, yeah, it will, go, it to will go to that int. So it will not accept it, I think. So so what happens is that we, we can actually do it like this. So um, uh, I can, uh, be, let, me, let me just do it like this. So this is ignore. In here, I'm going to say ignore two. Let's comment that for now. Okay. So the first one, oh, what am I doing? Okay. So in this get end, I'm going to show you this. Okay. So let's run this. Now, if I run this, the first one, let me just bring it over here. There you go. So the first one is, is going to, the first one is going to expect, so let's put it over here. The first one, why is it not showing anything? Stop. Let me just do it one more time. Uh, keep going. Okay, so oh, because I have an ignore at the beginning. Sorry, people. Sorry, everyone. Um, I am a bad person. I am a very bad person. <laughs> I cannot do it because then this function is going to take over. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for the confusion. My apologies, my apologies. Close your eyes, don't look, let me fix it. And then we'll continue. So in here I have cn dot ignore. And I, we have it here. Let's do it one more time. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies. Let's run it one more time. So, so now it shows int, int, okay? And it wants to get an integer 
So I'm going to put over here one, two, three, and I hit enter. Obviously, because one is ignored, the value. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm rushing. There we go. Deep breath. One more time. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. All right. So let's start. So it says ignore. It comes to ignore. Now I put one, two, three. I hit enter. One character is ignored. One is going to be gone. And therefore, what is going to be what is going to be read is 23 in value. And it's going to say value is 23. Are we OK with this? OK, so the second thing is to call ignore with only one argument. So if I get an if I want to get an integer, now it's going to ignore two. So if I put over here one, two, three, and I hit enter, because I said ignore two, it's going to ignore two uh, characters. That is one and two, and therefore there is only one three over there to be read, and value is going to be only three. Are we okay with that? What I wanted to say was this. I cannot say we cannot do the exact same thing that we have done in here. You cannot say ignore backslash n and think that this is going to ignore the new line. When you say ignore backslash n, it's going to pass the ASCII code of backslash n to ignore as a value which is number 10. So it's going to ignore 10 characters. This will ignore 10 characters. Don't make this mistake. So if I just come down to this point and see what's going to happen for the last one, I'm going to um, stop and run it one more time to just understand how it works. And I'm going to put the stop sign over here. So let's run it. Now in here, as you see, I'm not getting any warning because an integer is a character is a small integer. So in here, I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, a big number. And I'm going to copy it so I remember what it is. OK. So I hit that one. As you see, the first one is removed. Oh. The, oh, sorry, it's too big for an integer. Darn it. Um, what do I do? What do I do? I'm going to change the thing to a string. So I'm going to go character str50. In here, I'm going to go OK. So ignore and 50. And in here, I'm going to say C in str. So it's essentially the exact same thing, but with the string. So I'm going to put str and do this three times. OK. So the first one is one ignored. The second one is two. And uh, the third one is going to be 10. OK. So let's do it one more time. All right. So I have a string of 50 characters that I want to read. So in here, I'm going to put A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And these are the values that I'm going to read. OK, so that's the first one. And as you see, one is removed and that's it. And the second one will be like that because it's two. You will see two character will be remo removed. And I'm so sorry for a second. I don't know what the devil happened here. This is jinxed. Now see who came in. Get out of here. Just a second. My apologies. Let me pause this. <laughs> this is such a day. Give me a second. Sincere apologies on that. Actually opened the door and got in. I never apologize for puppies. <laughs> 
I don't know because because uh, she's a loving baby of ours but uh, hey uh, <laughs> uh, she wants to come um, I don't know she wants me to hug her and, and that that's not gonna happen while I'm teaching so <laughs> anyway so well uh, in here uh, one more time let's see how many times we have to go before this ignore is gonna happen so in here I'm gonna put backslash n all right so the first one is going to read a string ignore one and read a second one is going to and show it read a string ignore two and the third one is going to read a string and okay and and to make sure that uh, everything is good actually this is not bad it's a good example i'm going to put over here three and we'll see what happens so please reboot your brains and let's go through this again Let's reboot our brains. My apologies on that and redo this again. So we'll begin. All right. So number one, let's start. I am ignoring one character and then I am going to read something using C in. So it's going to go when I type over here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, J, K, L, M. When I put all these things over here and hit enter, C in will C in ignore will ignore one character. A will be ignored, okay, and then C in string will receive whatever is remaining up to new line. So it's going to get everything and read it. So that's what's going to happen. And it's going to print it. So we're going to have B, C, D, E, F, and it's going to go, go over there. Are we okay with this? Okay, now the next one is a tricky one. And I'm going to pull you on that to see if you know what's going to be the output. Okay, so now pay attention, please. This is important. Now it's going to come over here and ignore three characters and I'm gonna put the exact same thing and I'm gonna hit enter. Oh, not there. And I'm gonna hit enter. Now it's going to read those values inside SDR and it's gonna print. Now my question, what is going to get printed now? I want to see the person who answers it correctly. I'm going to give them some extra marks. So I'm letting everybody to actually respond. Last chance. All right, and the Oscars goes to, so let's actually go over here and show you what happens. So if I actually sh uh, show what's going to be happening over here, it's C that is going to get printed, okay? Because I ignore three, remember, anything that you enter leaves a new line in the memory. So the first ignored character will be the new line. Then two, and therefore A and B will be ignored and C is after that. Jay, are you my student? Uh, yes, in NA section. You are. So you got yourself 2% for the uh, midterm. Thank you. All right. So C is going to be what was actually get ignored, which brings us back to the next thing. Now I'm going to say C in ignore backslash N. This is a common mistake that everybody makes and the program don't work. They, they don't accept. They think if they say C ignore, ignore backslash N, it means ignore the backslash N or ignore up to backslash N. This is not what happens. Essentially C in ignore is the ASCII code of backslash N that is going to get passed to uh, the the ignore and therefore when it actually enter over here what you see 
in uh, uh, in here is to for 10 characters to be ignored not new line but the ASCII code as an integer do we understand this all right I like Sandy's answer <laughs> <laughs> think so did you oh yeah thank you you said i thought you said i think so okay all right okay so good good all right good so that's that you're just being being uh, uh polite <laughs> not really jason you did not understand really tell me why wait so why did it start with c again can you explain that a little bit more okay if you put one two three and you want to enter it what are the keys that you is gonna hit you are going to hit on your keyboard enter new line you put one two three and you hit enter correct mm -hmm. what are the characters inside keyboard one two three and new line correct yes so when you read this what is going to get read one two and three correct yes what remains in the keyboard new line new line now in here it's a character string when I put ABC and I hit enter What's going to go into the keyboard? A, B, B C, C, and new line. And new line remains in there, correct? Yes. And now in line 14, I'm getting C in ignored, correct? And the yes. user enters one A, B, C, correct? Yes. So what I have in keyboard is enter, A, B, C, enter, correct? Yes. So it picks up the new line first, then A, then B, and then it starts with C. Okay, so why did why did it happen the same for the third one then? Why didn't it happen the same with the third one? No, did, did it happen with the same with the first one, a third one? Because first one is a fresh keyboard. There is no new line in there. No, I mean third one. Ignore backslash N, you mean? Yeah. Because what is actually called in here is cn dot ignore ten, not new line. Oh, okay, I think I get it. Thank you, sir. Because the ASCII code of new line is ten. What is okay? Really called when you pass backslash n as an integer okay all right I wanted to start with this ignore when I was teaching this because it is important over here to go through all these things and understand how the buffer of the keyboard actually work so that's what happens okay so now we know uh, 0 6 ignore and sorry for all the mistakes and typos and so ignore and buggered bu buffered buffered input dot cpp okay so that's that so another useful functions for uh for uh c in uh, is again another version of get function that uh, it's a good idea to know so you can actually go cin.get and uh, you can actually mention over here uh, uh, so this is exactly so uh, not that one not this one this is the one yes it's stream size and delimiter there you go so it is it is uh, um, what you want to read how many you want to read where where to stop so in here i'm gonna put tilde comma okay and i'm gonna say c out str and i'm gonna show this string okay and after this, we're going to go c in dot get a thousand and backslash n just to flush so I can do the test next test as I go through. Not get ignore. 
Okay, so this this is essentially flushing keyboard. So um, uh, be mindful. So get says read ten characters from input up to 10 characters in input and put it in a string and stop at a comma okay so and then I'm gonna do another C in over here and in here I'm gonna say character what is left okay so in here I'm gonna say right after that I'm gonna say in dot get str 10 and this time I'm gonna put new line to stop at new line uh, and not a, sorry what is left over here what is left so it's gonna get read the, uh, uh, the values in what if what is left and it's gonna print it out so we're gonna see what is left in the keyboard and then stop right after that um, sorry okay I deleted my str by mistake so that's str okay let's comment those things and just do it like that for now okay so now I'm gonna start okay so it's gonna receive a string so I'm gonna say put over here something like this it's gonna go right over here and start getting a string from me and I'm gonna put a b c d and a comma d e f g so if I hit enter now you will see that the value inside uh, the the string is a b c d and it stops at comma but what I want you to see is this what is left I want you to see what is left afterwards in the keyboard okay so this ignore I'm gonna remove and I'm gonna copy that one and I'm gonna put over here what is left okay and let's put a, a star over here okay so um, that's okay now if I run the program again you will see that the get string over here when I go a b c d e comma f g h i j enter if I hit this one as you see it receives and stays up to the character but it's gonna read the rest and stop at, at new line and as you say oh, what, is left, what is left bad, bad boy I am and as you see what is left would be what would be uh, what is left would be essentially this it the comma actually remains in the keyboard so it reads and stops at comma but comma stays in a keyboard so essentially this if I had if I had a C in dot get 1000 and I ignored a new line it would bypass that one uh, sorry ignore I can do this because this ignore of mine will ignore that one character that is left in there so now if I run it one more time and do the same thing you will see that the program runs exactly as it did before okay now so that's zero seven that's in dot get uh, len uh, len uh, sorry str len and delimiter 
Cpp. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you is the function get line, not get get line. So if you have the function get line, then this cannot be here because get line on line get actually extracts what you have inside the line. So now if I run the program again with the exact same thing, if I put the exact same value, you will see that that comma is not in what is left now. It is actually wiped out. And therefore, I cannot flush afterwards because this backslash and actually uh, uh, is removed from the entry. I have to make sure that that's the, that's the, the case. So um, are we okay with this? Oops, sorry. Are we okay with this, actually? That's get line. So is it that get line flushes for you, or is no, it... it doesn't flush. No, it's because just that it stops with the comma and then, if it and then starts 10, after. If it reaches 10, then nothing is flushed. So after get line, if you have 20 characters, you have to see what is the the size that you read in here. So if okay. if I hear, so let's put it this way. So if I actually run the exact same program now, and I put A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and I put comma, A, B, C, I, well, whatever, X, Y, Z over here, and hit enter, this is what happens. So it actually goes right up to J and stops over there. And the rest remains in memory. You follow? Okay, so instead of going to the buffer, it goes to memory. Yeah, so it's so essentially it just stops over there and the rest remains. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so that's that. Um, what I wanted to do. Yeah, stop that. So now that's get line. Uh, and now about C out. Uh, C out, essentially, you can do m all the formatting that you can do. You can actually do it with C out. So with C out, we are actually, when you're actually writing stuff, you can go through setting fields in group ref justify, write justify to show you the, the how it works. It's pretty simple. Integer A, I'm going to put over here 12. So I can say C out A. Okay, then I can say you see out dot width. So let's actually do width. And I can put over here 10. Okay, now I can say. Now I can actually say over here. See out. Let's go new line. So an asterisk over here. And I'll go C out. And put over here A and then an asterisk. Okay? So now if I if I run this program, you will see that the 12 is second one is actually printed in 10 spaces. Okay? Now you can actually, but remember this width only affects the next, only affects the next printout. Okay. Now I can say C out dot set uh, set F, which is uh, uh, um, to actually set what is the, uh, uh, the 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 format that you want to have, and I can say iOS, for example. So iOS is the uh, the mother of all input output uh, uh, classes. And in here I can say, for example, left, which means I want it to be left justified. And uh, one thing I have to do, yes, left, left justified. And then I do the printout again with that width. And now you will see that actually, uh, the 12 is sitting at left side of that thing. So it makes things left justified. But left justified is forever. <laughs> okay? Unless 
you unset it. So usually after printouts, a good practice is to always unset what you have set. Stop. Stop. Yeah, the quiz starts in five minutes, people. Okay, we go unset F, and if you do that, then it goes back to what it was before. So um, uh, you can do iOS right, iOS left, so um, all the things like that. Very simple and straightforward. You can set the precision, so integer uh, num, uh, sorry, fl uh, double num, and I can set that num one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I actually, uh, I can display the the number. Num in here. And the left and right works for, for double two, test it. It doesn't make any difference, but you can actually uh, set uh, the, the, the number of floating points after the num by two commands. So you can at first go cout.setf. You have to say iOS fixed. Fixed means I want you, when you are printing doubles, do not make it efficient. The format that I tell you is what is the fixed format. If you don't do that, then it's going to decide what is the best thing. When you do fixed, that's what it means. It means my format and not the default. Okay. Now I can go see out dot set precision. Uh, uh, sorry, precision. Now I can put over here two, and now I can print the exact same number, and this number from now on, and this is again forever. It sets it unless you unset it. You can set the precision back to whatever you want, but because it's fixed, then it's fixed. And if I run uh, the program, you will see that the first one is going to get printed with uh, three digits after the decimal point, but the second one actually rounds it. And as you see, because seven is greater than one, one will be added to that one, and therefore it's, it, it's the precision. So um, you can actually set the... Uh, uh, the left side, the, the empty parts of uh, your um, output to get printed any way you want. So I can actually uh, say set, uh, set to left. And in here, I can actually, after the width, I can set over here, see out dot fill. And I can set that fill, let's say, with at sign. So it means the empty spaces after the, um, sorry. Character, single character. All right. Now, if I do it, it's going to actually show the, uh, the fill the right side with at sign, the place that are empty. So please go through the notes uh, in uh, uh, the uh, dynamic memory allocation, mem sorry, member functions and privacy. Go through all the details at the bottom and you will see exactly how these things are done. And try not to use manipulators. Do not include I.O. Manips up there. Try to use it this way for now until you understand how it works. Then we'll talk about manipulators at the end of the uh, semester. For now, try to format everything you print like this and only this way, please. Are we okay with this? Perfect. The quiz begins in two minutes, so uh, get ready for that. I'm going to save all these things, and uh, 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 we'll continue about uh, development of Mark and constructors and destructors, and uh, that's going to be the next session. Don't miss it. It's the most important session you're going to have for the semester. All right, quiz begins in two minutes. And I'm going to go and actually make sure that it's there. In one minute, it's going to actually, you know what? I'll make it available. Oh, it says unavailable. So it is available now. Let me just see. It's 
so it's going to start in, in just a minute you can ask any questions if you have turn on your audio I'm gonna stop the recording